Let's get into today's episode of Why We Succeed. We've talked about some limiting beliefs that often can, you know, handicap or stranglehold people from getting started. When you look back in your journey, were there ever any either limiting beliefs or any challenges that you faced that you found to be difficult to get you to where you are now and that you had to overcome? In terms of business, you know, it's, it's, that's, it's, it's tough because like, I don't want to come across as like, oh, like he had it all figured out, but mm-hmm. you know, believe in myself, though, you know, like some people, they may look at it like, you know, they're an introvert or, you know, like they had to deal with some tribe of trauma or something that they had to overcome. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be tied into business. If there was any type of challenge or limiting belief that you feel like, you know, you had to overcome in order to be the man that you are today. Yeah. I mean, we did, a, we did a whole different podcast on, 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 right. on that. And I'm not really <laughs> sure it's relevant for, for, for today because, you know, when it comes to work and when it becomes a business granted. So, you know, I talked about wanting to be an entrepreneur, you know, from a very, from a very young age, I didn't right. really start businesses until I was 30. So I had a decade of working in like the corporate world that, that I was successful at as well. So, you know, I, I stepped into business, like already a successful, you know, executive in a, in a recruiting mm-hmm. firm. I had, I had worked alongside another entrepreneur, a startup. We'd taken a company from zero to 5 million wow. in the first year. I was second in, you know, second in command there. Mm-hmm. So, so when I got into business, like I already kind of had somewhat of a track record and okay. I had a lot of belief that I'd built through being a competitive bodybuilder. So, mm-hmm. you know, lack of belief in, in mm-hmm. the business, not really. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> with that in mind, you know, st- operating in the corporate world, right? Even working with a startup, then even with the bodybuilding, like a lot of those things require a lot of work. Did you ever have any challenges with like balancing the different things that you were trying to accomplish? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, and and I've gotten to a point now where I don't think that balance is actually a real thing. I think in order Mm -hmm. to achieve success in a, in an area, another Mm -hmm. part of your life I don't want to say he's going to have to suffer, but you can't be, you know, a high level competitive bodybuilder and be raising a new fit, you know, an infant and be starting a brand new business and be, mm. you know, active in your community and church. Like you, the, you, we only have 24 hours in a day. You got to right. six to eight of them. You know, you got another three to four hours of personal maintenance. So when you look at like, what do you have to actually work on the business? Mm. Maybe 12 to 14 hours. Like if, mm. and then if, and then, you know, and then you have all this other stuff, you gotta be really, really good to maximize. 12 to 14 hours. So right. yeah, there was always kind of a, you know, give and take in certain things, you know, in, in mm-hmm. bodybuilding, you know, when I was in competition and in and, and, and prep mode, you know, relationships, you know, mm-hmm. took, took a back burner and starting, you know, my, my first business, I was pulling 12, 14, 16, 18 hours a day. Health yeah. sometimes took a little bit of, mm-hmm. of, of a backseat. Relationships took, took a backseat. I probably mm-hmm. would say I'm at the point now at 38 in, 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 in managing everything that I do. I'm probably mm-hmm. the most balanced I've ever been. But there's still some things that 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 obviously have to take take priority, and I think that's mm-hmm. in order to do that, you have to have the long term vision. You got to be really clear mm-hmm. on why you're doing it. You have to understand right. that you know things are seasonal. You know, I may have to you know I may have to pull you know three month you know ninety day run where we're where we're running twelve fourteen you know hours a day because I'm focused on getting to that next mark, and and that's right. okay, and I understand that. But what I'll do is, you know, if I go 90 days hard, then I'll, then I'll scale it back and I'll, you know, maybe mm-hmm. take a trip or something like that. So I don't yeah. believe in true, true balance any, mm-hmm. anymore, because I always think that something's going to have to play priority. There's got to be a hierarchy mm-hmm. in, in yeah. what you're doing. So, you know, but that can only be done once you kind of clear on, on, on where yeah. you're trying to go and you really understand the vision. And I'm glad that you pointed that out. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of the concept in economics where there's always an opportunity cost or there's always a trade off. Like mm. you can make a decision to do multiple things, you know, quote unquote, or seemingly at the same time. But every time you make a decision to do one thing, it's going to come at the cost of something else that you could have done. So yeah. you just have to be able to, uh, to a certain extent, mm-hmm. kind of manage the trade offs. Like, mm-hmm. what are you willing to trade in order to apply your time, your energy and your effort to this thing right here that you're prioritizing in the moment? 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's important, too, man. That's very important. I'm curious, is there anybody in your life, because this podcast is all about relationships and the role that people play in our lives to help us get to the place where we can start profitable businesses. Anybody in your life that you look back and you're like, yo, that person played a genuine role in you being the man that you are today or starting a business or finding the success that you had or are currently having? 
Yeah, man. Every every everything I have in in in, in where I'm at in today is is a direct result of of the people that have been in my life. You know, so mm-hmm. you know, funny because I just started. You know, I just started coaching little league here. Uh, oh wow! A few months ago, <laughs> I'm not a father. Nice. I'm coaching my nephew. See, my nephew is, t- is is ten, and my sister asked me if I would be interested in in in, in working with a team. You know, I, I love nice. I love coaching. I love mentoring. I love you know just being being a leader. So I jumped mm-hmm. I jumped right at it and. You know why I was so passionate about doing it? Because I remember, I remember the coach I had from ten, from ten to twelve, changed my wow. life. Coach Bob Hall. I don't remember any of my other little league coaches. You know, I played baseball wow. for seventeen <laughs> years. I remember Bob Hall, and I remember Coach Baisley. Coach Baisley coached okay. me in, in 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 varsity high school. The only two. So I had I had somebody that 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 changed my life back when I was ten, twelve years old, mm-hmm. just by just by how he how he coached and how he cared about the development mm-hmm. of boys becoming young men. So that's what I try to right. do. You know, with the kids that I'm working with today, but. You know, my first real mentor came came into my life when I was 21 years old. I was working. It's funny, I was working in the wireless industry. Um, <laughs> sold thousands of people their first cell phones ever. Just dating myself. Wow. A little bit there, you know? I was selling the Motorola Razor flip oh, phone. Oh man, that's, that's yeah. how far back I, I go. That. I was one of the first people to have a BlackBerry. Uh, nice. But I had a we 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 had a sales leader in that organization called Tommy Sheldon. Hmm. Tommy Tommy passed. He died in a boat at, boating accident about six years ago. But he was probably the first person I could really look at. It was like like a mentor mm-hmm. because, you know, he came in and, and and he wanted to get to know each one of us individually and what what drove us from the inside. You know, Tommy reminded me a lot of like your kind of Tony Tony Robbins figures, mm-hmm. just a powerhouse. Like when he entered in the room, there was a presence uh, about him. There was a glow when he spoke. You know, always brought positivity, always brought light light into the world. So so Tommy was somebody very early mm-hmm. on. For me, but more recently, you know, really these last four years, like this mm-hmm. entire, you know, kind of kind of new journey and in, in that I've that I've been on has been because of the right people. So, you know, mm-hmm. can name a few of them here. You know, Vince Vince Del Monte uh, mm-hmm. was my first real business coach. You know, that, that it wow. paid to coach me. You know, on on the business side of things, and you know, I actually work for for Vince's organization today. Mm-hmm. I'm one of his coaches inside the Seven Figure Mastermind. Nice. Where we help online online fitness entrepreneurs grow and scale their businesses. But he's one of them, you know, you know, Josh Katchadorian, I believe we talked about briefly on, on the last episode I was with you on the Real Love uh, yeah. radio show. You know, Josh was there. I met Josh through Vince's, through Vince's business group. Uh, wow. But he was a person that was there with me the day, the day that I was saved on October yeah. 22nd, 2018. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about Mike. That was a powerful Mike. story, Frank, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we can talk about Mike Westerdahl, you know, the guys who were at Critical Bench, what, you know, what, what mm-hmm. that place has, has played in, in my life. But. Mm-hmm. I have multiple mentors, you know, today, you know, I run a podcast every, you know, every guest that I bring on the podcast from, you know, Steve Weatherford to, you know, yeah. Dave Asprey. I just, I just interviewed the world's leading, you know, researcher on the gut microbiome. All of those oh, are wow. virtual mentors to me, all the podcasts mm-hmm. that I consume, you know, Born to Impact, the Ed My Let Show, those are all mentors mm-hmm. to me. I think, I think I can learn something from everybody and that's how I try to show up today. That is so key, man. You just hit on a nugget that I have definitely began to live by, which is, Understanding that we can learn from everybody. And it's actually, I think, um, like a, a Jewish nugget where they say, who's a wise person? And they say the person who is able to learn from any person. And mm-hmm. that really resonated with me the first time I heard it because it's so it's so right. And and honestly, it's needed in the society that we live in today because people are always seem to be at odds. And, you know, people's ears are often closed and not willing to open their ears and their hearts to listen to other people. And when I, when I recognized that it started to change me personally, where I was mm. like, okay, just because a person may disagree with me or view things different than I do on one issue, that doesn't mean that I have to close off and not be able to receive other things that they could share or pour into my life. And I'm so glad that you, you shared that because it definitely is something that I can relate to. And I, I agree with you completely, man, being in that position to learn from everybody, man, that's a game changer as well. I think that's a that's a skill that if you acquire it, yo, it, it, it's good. Like it, it's golden. Like what you had mentioned earlier, where once you learn how the the skills that's necessary to be a millionaire or to earn a certain amount of revenue or to accomplish something, nobody can take that away from you, even mm. if you lose, you know, quote unquote, those resources. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Why We Succeed. If you value relationships and believe they are the true key to success, be sure to subscribe. To watch this full discussion and gain access to exclusive content, join our Patreon today. The link is in the description. Thank you, and we'll catch you on the next episode.